It's on. We're on. <laughs> hey. Hello, everyone. This is Calusa John, Max Iguana. Okay, I look old, Aaron. I look old, Aaron. Film guy. Here today uh, in beautiful Benito Springs, Riverside Park. Um, as the, we talked about last week, on Thursdays, we're here in the cabin, cabin number six. In Artist the Cottage. Artist Cottage, exactly. Um, we're here and we're, uh, we're doing some things. Last week, I took an agave stick and I stripped it down with a cockle shell into a needle and thread. That you see right here. So today, we're going to talk about what do you do with that uh, once you've got the fiber and how do you make it longer and everything. So Max, for the moment, hey boy. How we doing? Max is going to take a break here. And Aaron, I think we're going to want to close up. We can zoom in and zoom down. Max is acting crazy, though. <laughs> yeah. What's going on there, Max? Here, we'll put you at the bottom. You can climb to the top there. Okay, one of the things you have to do is you have to separate the fibers. I'll get in there. Real close in here, John, so we can yeah. see your hand work here. And you see, you separate your fibers, and you get, oh, I don't know, four or five of them together. Now, you see how pretty this Oh, it's beautiful. Looks. Does it stay that color, John? Absolutely. Absolutely. It just is it's just awesome color, and it's strong, very strong. All right. So... What I'm going to do is with my thumb and my forefingers, I'm going to twist. Okay, see how I'm twisting? I'm twisting with this hand in one direction and this hand in the other. Right? You see how it does that? Now I'm going to continue to do that. And as I do that, why isn't it on unraveling? That's because it's locking in place. And that's why I'm doing it like this. It's called plying. And this is one of the earliest technologies, and it's a very basic technology used for survival. It, you can make cording, clothing, rope. Um, once you've got this mastered, you can do an assortment of different things. And as you can see, I just keep twisting, and this just keeps getting longer fast. and longer. Now, one of the ways to do it is like this. Hold it in your teeth, continue to do it, and twist with your hands. That's how you taught me. Yep. But uh, we got a stick. You got a, yep. uh, a weaving stick that I would hold between my feet. And well, I between used, your toes. Between exactly. my toes, and I would do this for hours. I used to do this for hours. It's the only way you get good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to understand, the collusive, um, probably women and children would do this for hours and hours and make um, rope cording for clothing. Yeah. And fishing lines fishing lines nets that was their tv right yeah that was their exactly their dyi tv sitting around a uh, a fire eating conch shells flying yeah. yeah eating clams eating clams cockles max is bored <laughs> yeah well, it isn't uh, isn't like exciting, exciting, but it's it's exciting if you're caught out in the bush, yeah, and and exactly. being able to make some fibers and and be able to make stuff and and have cording out there. Now, John, I know you use the agave on this, but what's some other cordage that you, you can, could use you also? You can do this with almost anything that provides a fiber, anything from banana. Yeah, why don't you grab that? I'm gonna grab this here. My uh, oh, we got some cool thing. stuff on here. Let's show yeah. them this here. And this is our hold that up in front of the camera. And this is our our sample stick right here. Right. Now this is a gavi right here, and that's plied into a thread and cording. But this is right here. That's a banana leaf. This one right here. Yep, that's a banana leaf. Check that out. And that's actually thick cording. If, yep. you, if you guys get to see that. And if you let the Spanish moss sit in the water until it turns black, then it's pliable and you can turn it into this. So this is Spanish moss right here. Yeah. It's strong stuff. I mean, it's not going to snap. Exactly. Matter of fact, this right here, this right here, just this little piece, that's where you go. <laughs> I'm making a break yes. for it, Dad. <laughs> this right here is about a 25-pound test. 
It's amazingly strong. And then you could do a three weave ply on this and then yep. use this to ply with other plies yep. to actually make the ply. You can make it four, eight, ten. I mean, you can just keep going with this, make it thicker and bigger. On this here, you've, you've got three kinds of um, cabbage palm. Okay, this is the hair on the cabbage palm. This is this what they call a sable. It is sometimes called the sable palm because of this. And this is from the, the basic um, palm fraud right at the very um, base of the palm fraud to the plant. Uh, it, it gets very stringy fiber there. So you can get three different kinds of fiber out of the cabbage palm. And uh, I suspect the Calusa Indians, that's one of the reasons at their sites, that's almost what you find exclusively is cabbage palm. Cabbage palm. But you know what the interesting thing about cabbage palm in Florida don't mow your yard for a month, and guess what you're going to see growing in your yard? Cabbage palms. They, they pop out of nowhere here. And cabbage palms, you know, it, it, it's our state tree, isn't it? Yes. The cabbage palm. And what's really interesting about it, what I learned through John, is it's, it's a, one of these, uh, I call it a tree that provides a lot of stuff for you. Um, it provides cording, and what John just explained, three different, four different types of cording you could do. Guess what? The hearts of palm... You could eat, you could eat the cabbage exactly. palm, and they have a big festival out in La Belle called the Cab Swamp Cabbage Festival. It's called Swamp Cabbage, and it's very tasty. It tastes like nothing. <laughs> you had stuff. I mean, it's a vegetable. You just season it. You season it, and the best thing to, with cabbage palm is called Everglades seasoning. So if you ever buy that, do that. And the other cool thing is, is uh, we're going to be doing some more of these classes where John's going to be making what's called a throwing spear, which is called an at atlatl. atlatl. And we use part of the cabbage palm to as an arrowhead for these things, and they work or as an as, as an, an arrow, arrow as an arrow, yep. and they work beautiful. As a matter of fact, if you want to take that and put that back over there okay. and grab the grab well, the arrow, this I want to talk about. Oh yeah, talk about wanna, the sinkers. I want to talk about this. So now you found that I found this, and, and you get very lucky. I always look, and rocks are not indigenous to Florida. And so when I'm always at the beach or looking around, I'm always looking at rocks. And I was collecting a bunch of these things. I was bringing them back to John. I said, look at these crazy looking rocks. And John goes, these are Calusa sinkers. And this is, what, this is what the Calusas would do. They would actually weight their nets down. They would use these shells, just like this. They would uh, form it so they would be able to tie it. But these are actual Calusa sinkers. And so if you're over at the beach and you're looking through the rocks, always look for these type of rocks because guaranteed some Calusa use this. And the oh, reason yeah. why we know it's a sinker and it's not naturally forming because it's been worked. You could yeah. tell that it's been worked. Um, John has a very keen eye. Um, normally rocks don't look yeah. like this out well, of, uh, out of nature. You found several of them. It's not yeah. like there was just one. No, I found, I found, you found, well, I found, more. I found like five or six yeah. of them all, all, in an, all in an area. So... Really cool looking stuff. Um, I always try to go when if they're dredging the beach or doing beach renourishment. Always try to look through the rocks because you'll find some really cool stuff. Um, what else we got up here? Don? Cabbage palm arrow. We got a cabbage palm arrow. Let me grab <laughs> this thing. Easy, baby. Oh. There you go. Max is getting wild here. Yeah, um, there's a cabbage, and we'll demonstrate this at uh, one of our classes. Is this is just a cabbage palm palm fraud, or, all right? And it's been scraped down with a clamshell to what it is now, uh, just an arrow shaft, or as the Spanish call them, dart shafts. Dart shafts. And um, it's got some, uh, those are egret feathers at the end, I believe. Or, uh, and, there, and look at what we used on this here. If you look at it, we use cording uh, that John made right out of the, right out of the, Yep, agave. Right out of the agave right there. This is what we use to tie the feathers on. You make the grooves on there because it needs use this a to little fly. Glue. Um, you can use glue. And the, the Calusas would use uh, boiled down sap from the gumbo limbo trees. Really? Yeah. Um, awesome. Do they ever use uh, anything with the strangler fig? Uh, that, that's more of a paint though, they isn't it? They use that for paint. That's latex paint. And we'll also demonstrate that as we go along. Um, that'll be one of our classes. So... Uh, we use this one. We don't put a, a, a tip on this one because we actually throw this and, and do the demonstration. But uh, 
this is a really efficient, efficient. Uh, oh, it's a great and it's when a we do great the, arrow shaft. Um, when we do the ethylator, we'll demonstrate it. It's uh, you want that flex in that arrow, and by getting that flex in that arrow like this, that thing when you let loose, that thing just flies like a missile. And those, those poor Spanish, uh, you know, Spanish conquistadors didn't know what hit them with these things. Crazy these were, stuff. They were one of the few weapons that. Um, the tips were equipped with something that would actually penetrate the Spanish uh, armor, the Spanish chainmail, and uh, Ponce de Leon was killed by one. Killed by one, right in the leg. Now I'm getting down to the end here, and I'm going to want to splice some more in. And this is the whole. This is the hardest part, I think, for me, because you don't want your line to be pregnant. Yeah. And uh, you want it to be a consistent, uh, a consistent. Uh, you know, width or diameter, right. I want to say. And the hardest thing for me is when you splice in to make a longer thing. But John's really good at this. He's really Now it's quick. starting to get thin on this side. So I'm going to take one strand and put one strand in. Get a close up here. Yeah, I'll get a close up on there. Get into your hands there. Okay, see, I'm twisting it on one side, I'm twisting it on the other. So it twists right in. Now I twisted that strand into the side that was weak. And as I go along, every time I hit an end of one strand, I'll put a new one in. By doing that, that stays the consistency of, of the actual ply. Right. And it actually distributes the weight, the stress over the entire line instead of that one point. It's one of these type of uh, plying that when you pull it tighter, when you pull on both ends, the actual braid gets tighter and more stronger. Yeah, like a Chinese finger cuff. Like a Chinese finger cuff. <laughs> Remember those. Why? I used to get those at the fair. That's, yeah. that, that was like a fair thing. You win them as prizes those all the time. prizes all the time. But yeah, just plying in there. Plying just place it in. One at a time. Or two at a time, depending on what you need. And three at a time, whatever it is. And just keep going. And you can go on until you run out of material. And bottom line is, you can see. You can see it's a yeah, nice, see you try nice to get cording in there. right there. Nice cording. Look how beautiful that is. And doesn't come unraveled. Nope. Check. See? Excellent. All right. Well, that's it for today. Well, that was quick. Yeah, um, we don't do it too long, but we're going to be here every Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Uh, stop by and see us. Stop by in the cabin. I'll be doing uh, demonstrations. I'll be doing art. Uh, I'll be telling stories about the Calusa Indians and the first settlers. Aaron and I will be, uh, Aaron, my sidekick here, is uh, be here. We'll be telling. He has some great stories about early Benita Springs. He grew up here. And we'll, you'll be hearing about Buddy Hackett and a few other things. Oh, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. But this is uh, this is all what CGT is about. Calusa Guided Tours. This is how we started. We started out there. And I do want to mention, I was on social media. I was on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm kind of going through uh, stories. And uh, NBC popped up. And guess what I saw? You and Alex Howard out exactly. at the Randall Research Center. And I saw the whole thing. I saw the interview. I saw the, the whole thing on there. And that was kind of cool, John, going yeah. out there. and man. It's a very nice location. Uh, it's a Calusa, an actual Calusa site where you can visit the pyramids. And they have a bookstore on site. A great place to visit, absolutely. Yeah. We have, and, and, you know, I, while we're giving plugs, yeah. uh, here in Benita Springs, Old downtown, visit the Wonder Gardens, visit Riverside Park, um, and there's other parks attached to Riverside Park. Go over to um, Island Park and Bamboo Park, check out the Bansdell Shell, um, get an ice cream. There's a great ice cream shop over here, and now we even have a custom craft liquor. Uh, yeah, I saw the uh, it's all in the Sunday paper. They're yeah. they're uh, Naples Daily News. They they welcome. You know they're open and. Serving craft liquors, so uh, 
Absolutely. Nice. And the Survey Cafe has got great French shows. Uh, I got the Bonita Wine and Coffee down the street. We just saw yep. uh, Tom was here from the Coast Guard and his wife stopped and said she and had a lovely coffee there. You've been doing a lot of work with the Coast Guard. Been doing a lot of work. We'll be talking about that tomorrow during the show. Uh, there's some really exciting stuff that uh, that I've been asked to do uh, with the Coast Guard and Coast Guard Auxiliary. And uh, it's a brand new program, and uh, I'm going to be leading uh, leading the charge on it. So uh, we'll be talking about that tomorrow during our show. Yeah. We'll, it's re it's we'll going to really about, impact Bonita, so it's a really, really good thing. We'll really be talking thing. about um, the, the uh, council meeting last night, or yesterday uh, during the day, and the workshop about Bamboo Park. So, um, we'll have a, a pretty full morning tomorrow morning with things to talk about at 9, 10 a.m. right here. Um, having said all that... Hey. I think we've said about enough. Hey, uh, yeah, the Calusa John, Kayak Local yeah. Aaron, Max, Artist Cottage, number, number six, six at Riverside Park. Come on down, do some art with us. Thursday afternoons, one o'clock. Excellent. Hit the button there. All right, finish.